Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Reviews, welcome back to the best supercar channel on the internet. Today's video is sponsored by Rich Reviews. Rich Reviews now provides services to support our viewers in purchasing their own dream supercar. Our services currently include pre-purchase inspection, support calls and collection video to document you collecting your own dream supercar. More information in the description below. Hope you enjoy the video guys. So I've now owned our 458 Spider for nearly two years and I've gained enough information in that year and nine, one year and nine months to give you a good appraisal and good appreciation of my favourite things about this car. So today we're going to cover off my top five favourite things that I love about my 458 Spider. Quick wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing the Rolex GMT2 126711 CHNR, also known as the root beer. So the first item on my top five list of favorite things I love about my 458 is, you cannot miss it, the Pinaferina 458 styling. Just look at it. It's awesome. It's by far one of the most beautiful supercars Ferrari have ever made. The 458 is the last supercar styled by Pinaferino. All downstream later cars, the 488, the F8, 296, etc., are styled internally. They're no longer styled by Pinaferino. This is the last supercar styled by Pinaferino for Ferrari. And it shows it. The, 45, the 488 and the F8, they've tried to duplicate the styling, but they've unfortunately skipped it a bit where they've had to put intercoolers on the rear wings um, to be able to provide cool air into the into the intercoolers for the turbos so unfortunately they've been forced into that but in my opinion the way they've done that styling isn't so great so when you look at it from the front of the car downstream you've got the winglets which are very unique to the 458 they create additional downforce as you're moving forward to put downforce on the front of the car to aid steerability and tractability you've got these little cutout vents between the bumper and the bonnet. Now this is very reminiscent, in my opinion, the Amira lens and plays a bit of a nod to the 458. I'm sure it wasn't intentional, but that side styling cutouts that they got in the, in the Lotus Amira, that's why I like those side cutouts because it's reminiscent on the 458. And as you come down here, you've got the vents that reduce pressure down onto the front, onto the front wheel arches. Even that's cool styling as, he, as it allows the airflow through to reduce the pressure onto the front on the front of the car and allow cooling again into the front radiators from uh, which happens from the front as well and as you come down here the, the 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 door mirrors beautifully styled to allow airflow to caress around the the wing mirrors the airflow as it comes down the side of the car beautifully styled door handles again to aid airflow coming around again to these to these beautiful curves coming over the rear wheel arch again not interrupted by in great intercooler gaps bloody awful things that you have on the 488 and the F8. Coming back into these beautifully styled air intakes again to provide cooling into the rear of the engine and air intakes on here for the Spider to provide cooling into the, into the top end of the engine. Even the styling as you come round to the back on the, on the rear lights, yeah, you've got the single rear lights here. Again, reminiscent of the F40. The, the rear styling of the 458 is reminiscent and styled, has a lending towards the F40 with the rear exhaust pipes in a trio as as here just it's just an awesomely beautiful car they haven't got close to it and they haven't bettered it in my opinion the next car that is i would say beautifully styled but still in my opinion not as good as a 458 and we did a comparison when we were at the millbrook proving ground when we were test driving the 296 is the 296 you can see here i initially thought the 296 was a better looking car but when you've got the two together i still think the 458 has it you know it's still a better styled car still think it's more beautiful the 296 is a beautiful looking car specced correctly that is a big caveat the 296 is a beautiful car specced correctly and that's very important um but this car, I mean, it's just astonishing. Even if you look at the, the front rake of the windscreen, just perfectly styled. It just, the whole side silhouette of the car is beautiful. There isn't a bad angle for the 458. It's just a beautifully, awesomely styled car. So that's number one on my list, the Pinaferina styling. So the second thing I love, or the second item on my top five that I love about my 458 Spider is the interior. 
what an awesome interior. Even though this car is, was, was built in 2015, this is a 2015 build, so it's the last, last year of the build for the 458s. And of course it was designed in circa 2009, 2010. So it's like really 12 years old, this design. Just look at the interior, it still is modern in its design. They still haven't really bettered it. It hasn't really leapt a lot forward. It's only in the, in the Roma and the 296 that it's really substantially changed on the interior. And even then, if you look at the Roma on the 296, you'd still say it lent back to the 458. This is such a, a, a historic design for Ferrari. When you look at the, the back of these race seats, for example, the race seats, in my opinion, are a definitive requirement for a 458, especially you've got a 458 Spider, so people can see the quality of these seats. Awesomely comfortable, astonishingly beautifully designed, just fantastic. They could not have designed that better. It could not be better, even from the point of view of the pull handle. Just beautifully designed. The cabin was assisted in its design by Michael Schumacher which Michael was very much responsible for the design of the steering wheel. So whether you love it or hate it, all the controls being on the steering wheel, it definitely gives it a beautiful, astonishing F1-like design. It just really lifts the cabin, the steering wheel. If the steering wheel wasn't designed in that manner, the 458 interior would look substantially different because you'd have indicator controls, light controls all over the place. It just would not be the same. And of course, you've got the carbon fiber paddle controls there to shift, to shift gear up and down as well. And just finishing on the steering wheel, you've got the beautifully styled Manatino and of course the beautiful red start button, start engine button. I mean, it could not say it better with what it says on that button, start engine. The indicators being on the steering wheel, meh, not so great, you know, especially in its design there. Later on derivatives with the F8, the 296, the Roma, etc were a lot better in their design um, because the, the, especially with the way that you have to do a long hold to do a lane change when it should be the other way around where you do a short hold for a lane change and a long hold to, to latch on the indicators which they did change for the 488 onwards but there you go. The placement of carbon fibre on this car as well yes this is a highly spec car so this has got a lot of carbon fibre in in fact it's got pretty much all the carbon fibre you could option inside the car so you have to take that with, with um, you have to take it as, it as it is that this car is very highly optioned anyway, but the placement of the carbon fiber is perfect, you know? They, they haven't got whacking great wads of carbon fiber on the top here, this is leather. This has got it set in there for the vents and for this internal section above the glove box. Again, the air vents and the air vents design are just something out of a spaceship, you know? If you, if you looked at those air vents design, you'd think they were reminiscent from something like Prometheus, you know, the, the new Aliens film, or it was a new Aliens film or relatively new Aliens film. So it's just fantastic styling. And even in the center console, beautiful, just enough room to be able to put area for your coins, placement for your mobile phone, and the carbon fiber side sections, which, this, which is unique to this car, because these side sections were optioned in carbon fiber, where on almost all other cars are optioned in leather. But beautiful styling. Beautiful interior. The seats, the center console styling, the way how carbon fiber is optioned on the internals on the internals of this car, the F1 styled steering wheel with all the functionality on the steering wheel, the Manantino start stop button, the paddles to change gear. Center playing the power shot is the tachometer, is the ref counter. This beautiful analog tachometer which no longer exists in Ferrari, they're all electronic now. But this was one of the last cars with a central tachometer, which you can see through the top gap in the steering wheel just beautiful it doesn't get any better and again the styling on this car was a stalwart it was the again one of the last if not the last Ferrari supercar that was styled in this manner with these legacies back to early history to early cars all electronics nowadays which I friggin hate I hate all these iPads and and these massive screens in cars um, you know lending back to the Lotus Amira that we previously looked at which check below if you want to look in my Amira, play, Amira playlist you see then the mirror has got a, a center section screen but that center section screen is a lot better than having a whacking great ipad in the middle which you have for, on on for example the roma so the only negative thing about the roma for me is that bloody ipad in the center section of the car and me being a, a technologist as well you'd think i'd love all the electronics in cars but i don't i don't think electronics suit cars i just think they're it's they're so easily dated it only takes a few years for that for the for it to really date the cars that's why Bugatti, the Chiron and the Veyron, that's why they don't have electronics in them. They knew what they were doing, Bugatti. 
So number two on my list is the interior styling of the 458 Spider. So the next item on my list of five favorite things that I love about my 458 Spider is the 458 Spider folding roof. Yes, I know this is specific to a Spider version. Well, I bought the Spider version. I bought the Spider version because of its hardtop folding roof. And my car has been enhanced by the installation of the Smart Top unit by Moz for Cars. So the Smart Top unit, if you haven't checked her out, if you don't know about the Smart Top unit, then please check my videos below. I did a full video about regarding the configuration and the installation and a full review of the Smart Top unit. But in effect, it provides the functionality to remotely operate the 458 Spider's um, hardtop roof and also it provides a capability which is its main functionality for you to operate the roof while you're driving the car. So the 458 Spider in its base design you have to stop the car to operate the roof whether you whether you drop the roof or whether you bring the roof back up again but with the mods for car modification you can configure it so you can operate the car up to certain speeds. So just look at the styling of this roof and the way the roof goes up it's just incredible. The styling of the roof doesn't take anything away from the car. In my opinion, the 458 Spider looks as good with the roof down as, we, as it does with the roof up, or rather the other way around. It looks as good with the roof up as it does with the roof down. And you can see, still see the buttresses at the back, um, which you don't get, of course, on the 458 Italia. So to be able to operate the roof remotely, you first of all have to lock the car. You have to wait five seconds for the ECU and electronics to stabilize so that the smart top can operate remotely. Then once that's stabilized, you press the close button three times, because obviously we're going to close the roof here. It will then close the windows and then it will close the roof. Just look at this styling, it takes 14 seconds end to end from you operating the roof to it fully closing. And conversely, from you operating the roof to it fully opening. And it'd be even quicker if you didn't configure it so that the windows closed afterwards. I can configure it with a smart top unit so the windows don't close afterwards. But because usually when I close the roof, I'm going to put the car away to bed and it's going to obviously have the alarm on it and needs to be secure. So obviously I'd want the windows to be closed. But just look at that, the styling in this roof, they fold back on each other. So you've got this section that lifts up, this section comes behind it and they have like this poetic ballerina dance as they fall back into the rear of the car. And these rear buttresses lift up in one section and then the roof dances its way back underneath the rear buttresses section into the, into the storage compartment and then the rear buttress section then closes. So now we're going to show the roof opening. Again, I'll use the remote control from the smart top unit. First of all, you unlock the car and then you wait you wait five seconds for the ECU and electronics of the car to stabilize to allow the smart top unit to operate, to, to remotely operate the, the opening of the roof. Then three presses. And then the windows drop down and then the roof opens. Now, if you've configured the smart top unit for the windows to stay down, as I have with my units, then the windows will stay down after the roof has been operated. Again, 14 seconds from start initialization of the process to the end, where the rear buttress section, the storage, the storage lid compartment is then closed. Again, back to this beautiful design. Absolutely astonishing. Now, technically, you could say that this isn't a proper convertible, a proper convertible. You don't have these rear buttresses. You don't have this rear section of the car. The car is fully open, but I prefer it. I think it lends itself more to like the 355 GTS styling, which I think was really cool. And the 355 GTS, you actually had the center section that you removed. It was a panel that you unclipped and removed and you put it behind the rear seats. Whereas with this, the whole roof folds back behind the storage compartment. Absolutely fantastic design, beautiful, stunning. It doesn't get much better. I mean, I'm asking you guys, you tell me in the comments below, how could that have been styled any better? The fact that they're still using that design with the 488, the F8 and the 296 says a hell of a lot. It's the same, it's the same mechanism that you're using in all downstream Ferraris that were incorporated and implemented in the 458 Spider. So the next item on my top five list is the engine sound. <laughs> Just listen. 
listen to that car. Just, just listen to that motor. Four point five liters, naturally aspirated. Five hundred and sixty-two brake horsepower. to 9,000 RPM. That flat plate crank providing that awesome sound. What is not to love? need to say anything more guys I don't need to explain that anymore that says it all the 458 sound nothing sounds like it and nothing in the future will ever sound like it now the 4.5 the 4 litre 458 naturally aspirated V8 flat plane crank engine 562 brake horsepower of awesomeness If you're ever on the fence about buying a 458, just repeat that sound over and over again and you will buy one and you will not be disappointed. That sound in itself sells the car. on my list was the 458 engine and its sound. So the final item on my list is the driving of a 458. Obviously if you see the reflection of the car in shop windows as you drive through villages and towns then that provides part of the driving of the car but mostly it's the sound and the feel of the car. <coughs> so it's the cockpit styling, the feel of the steering wheel, the feel of the car as you're driving it, the agility of the car, and of course, the sound. There's many a time when I've driven this car coming up to corners where I think I should never have been able to go around those corners at that speed, but the car's just held ground. It truly is awesome, especially when you think this car was styled back in 2009-2010. What an incredible thing. This is 12 years old design, 
12, 13 years old design. It should not be this good still, but it is. pulls hard, wanting to drive you towards that 9,000 red line. All its torque is delivered lower down, it's not delivered at 9,000. It could be argued that there's no real benefit to rev it to 9,000, but there is. There's that sound. pushing on hard, these race seats really hold you in, in position. The driving position is just perfect, as long as you've got it adjusted properly, of course. I've yet to drive a 458 Speciale, but I bet that would be just more awesome. It would be just incredible on a track. of the suspension as you're driving. It's neither harsh nor too supple. It allows the car to corner pretty much flat round the corners and yet not overly intense where you feel every single bump and nuance in a British B-Road. slow down a bit talk you through the controls in the car because that's all part of the drivability of the car you first of all you're looking at an f1 steering wheel you know yeah i know it isn't definitively an f1 steering wheel but it's styled like one so that adds to the ambience of the drive you look across the car and you've got this awesome internal cabin with all this carbon fiber and you look directly in front of you down the steering wheel First of all, you've got those LEDs that howl across the top of the steering wheel that scream you towards that 9,000 RPM limit. And you've got that tachometer center, really the main center focal point of the car, as it should be, as it always has been in a Ferrari and a Porsche, to be fair. Beautifully yellow background. Yellow definitive with Ferrari, along with, obviously, Rosso Corsa, its racing color. Well, Rosso Scuderia, its racing colors but it must be about 90% of cars, 90% of 458s, must have been specced with a yellow background to the rev counters, and that's for a reason. Looking out of the front of the car, you've got the two front wings, you've got the two front haunches, where you can easily place the car, easily lets you know exactly where the car is on the road, and that's vitally important when you're driving at pace down the country lanes that we have, especially in our area. You, at no point do you ever wonder where the position, where the placement is of the car. You always know where the car is, and it really helps the car to wrap around you. Then you've got the definitive capability to switch bumpy road mode on, and that still doesn't kill the tractability and the feel of the car. All it does is dull those sharp nuances in the road. Again, something we desperately need with our B-roads in, in Wiltshire and where we live in the countryside. <coughs> and you calm it down and you drive the car really gently, really slowly. The gearbox responds, isn't jumpy, 
and it's just a nice place to be, a nice place to relax and to drive steadily and to drive easily. You get all that calming effect with the open top roof, with the roof down, of the environment around you coming into the cabin, which is something, which is what's great about having a spider version of this car. I mean, we're driving here with trees around the side of us, and you really feel like you're driving in amongst the trees. It's really cool. It's really important to remember that this car is around 12 years old in its design. Have things really moved that much further forward? I mean, yes, the 296 is astronomically fast, the F8 is astronomically fast, but has the design of the car really moved that much further forward? Not really when you think about it. When you compare the speed of this car, 3.4 seconds, not to 60. Yes, the, the 296 is around 2.9, not to 60. But you know, that's 0.5 of a second. It's not a vast leap forwards. You can't gain much more than you get because you just can't keep the tractability. You can't keep the wheels from spinning. You put too much power. The 458 is definitely a sweet spot. You can't get away from it. Do you really need more than 562 brake horsepower on the roads? The answer is definitely no. You see me how I've driven this car today. Great fun. You've got to be able to get traction. You're driving an 812 GTS or you're driving a standard 812 Superfast. The bloody thing's spinning its wheels all the time. The electronics are stopping the torque from going to the rear wheels because it just cannot gain traction. It cannot hold itself on the road. What's the point of that? I mean, beautiful cars. I love the 812 GTS, as you know. But it's definitely a sweet spot. You don't need anything more than 562 brake horsepower. And this is naturally aspirated. You can't get away from that. It sounds a lot better. The delivery of power is a lot more linear. That naturally aspirated engine, never to be designed and never to exist again. The 296, fantastic car as you know. Watch my 296 drive video if you haven't seen it already. Beautiful, stunning car and they got the designing right. They got it back again. They got the designing back again. They got that sports car styling. They got that sports car type styling where the short, the wheel base, that where the wheelbase is just that little bit shorter and it makes all the difference in the styling of the car. But it's still not naturally aspirated. It's a hybrid. And yeah, I know those are the times we're moving towards, but this is why the 458 is such an awesome experience and never to be beaten. It's just a thing on its own. Such a thing as they say, such a fantastic car. So that pretty much sums up my five things that I truly love about the 458 and of course about my 458 Spider. You can see why I bought the car now. You fall in love with this car and you never fall out of love with it. If you've enjoyed the video, please give the video a thumbs up, guys. Lots of great content to come. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video.